boy Donna Bradley back at y'all <clears throat> with another video. And today we have we are back here with um, Casual Geographic, the curious case of the capybara. Now, I've heard of capybaras. I don't know a whole lot about them, which is why we're here. Um, and you know, just for the, the 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 great explanation of things, I had I had showed my girl casual geographic thinking that she was gonna think it was all oh, dope it was funny whatever, whatever, whatever. but she did but she had been already watching dude on tiktok so <laughs> i realized that i was super late to this party um but we here now you know what i'm saying we did the we did the the honey badger one but this one just dropped and we are gonna be checking out some more of the videos because like when i was a kid oh yeah i was all over like animal planet national geographic all that i used to do all that so like this is kind of like Like, I guess, I don't know. I, the, the comedy factor, that's what they was missing. That's what I needed. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Casual Geographic encompasses that. So, we here. Be sure to like. Be sure to subscribe. Follow me on all that there social media. We hear that. And further we're done. Three, two, one. Click. Cut out that music. Hold on. I made this joke already. How you doing? Fantastic. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a better week. I hope your month is full of successful days and a lot of great ventures. I hope you just come up, brother. You smell great. You smell great. Oh, the capybara. What? Hold up, bro. Oh, the cap. What in the moose's sea otter's horse is going on here? <laughs> I'm sorry. That thing, that thing got, it got some inner species relations going on. I just, woo, boy. All right. Hold on. We're going to let him do his thing now. <laughs> Capybara. One of the most memeable animals to be added to Earth's roster. Facts. Almost entirely for their sheer positivity. And it's not like that fake positivity from animals like dolphins or performative activists on TikTok. Capybaras are legitimately unproblematic. Almost too much for their own good. The thing is, they have no reason to be like this. In fact, they have every excuse to be the exact 180. But first, let's talk about what this aquatic stress. So this is the exact opposite of the honey badger, right? This is the <laughs> okay. All right, all right. This ball is. It's a rodent and pretty much a plus size guinea pig since that's their closest relative. Even though they're like 60 times heavier. Also, guinea pigs are one of the few mammals that can get folded by deep water since they can't swim, which is something cappies know nothing about since half their personality stays in the water with them. Just like their cousins- Since half their what now? <laughs> why you rose? Why you gotta disrespect it like that, bruh? Which is something cappies know nothing about since half their personality stays in the water with them. Just like their cousins, the Nutria, which is basically just a beaver you've never heard of. And the Paparata, who's probably most famous for getting abused with soap like a banned Old Spice ad. But out of all rodents, Capybara are the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. And considering how people feel about their cousins a hundred times smaller, you would think the Capybara would be- Yo, that, that mouse, whatever, it was about all the smoke. It came out of her like, what's up then? Like, why you mess? I ain't touch you. What the? <laughs> Grown man. And considering how people feel about their cousins a hundred times smaller, you would think the capybara would be the most hated oxygen sink on the planet. But the only thing more ironic than the fact that it's the complete opposite is the fact that this chunky chinchilla is so chill since history shows they should really be the polar opposite. You chunky chinchilla is so chill. This, he's speed of the bars. Let's go. Usually when something's this unbothered, it's because they've never felt any kind of pressure from predators. It's why the quokkas on Rottnest Island have no fear of humans since they have no natural predators. Capybara, on the other hand, have more ops than a rapper with a Rico charge. These giga gerbils have to avoid- Got more ops than a rapper with a Rico charge. Not the unbeatable. Not- <clears throat> Sorry. Dang. <laughs> being discharged from the population by- Ops and a rapper with a Rico charge. These giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by- The biggest big cat in North America. A that man said giga gerbils. I'm sorry. I'm weak. <laughs> Giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by the biggest big cat in North America, a discount store brand crocodile, and a paraplegic Jurassic understudy. Their childhood isn't because it ain't got no limbs. <laughs> Yo, this man, <laughs> I can't, bro. How y'all make it through these videos? A discount store brand crocodile and a paraplegic Jurassic understudy. Oh. Their childhood isn't any easier because juveniles can get caught up with ocelots, a paralysis demon with wings, and technically pelicans don't count, but it's not for a lack of trying. 
And normally an animal that has to share an area code with this many threats to its way of life compensates by becoming a problem itself. For example, if zebras had a stripe for everything with the ability to bury them, they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static stallions ride that excuse like they get taxed. Wait, what? I don't know what this, I don't know what that clip is. They wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static stallions ride that excuse like they get tax breaks from it. It just makes more sense for a prey animal to be more willing to throw down. Predators get active to eat. Prey animals fight to live. But what doesn't make sense is a capybara doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories. It's kind of like... I think it was like low-key like... I mean, are you gonna try to eat me? Oh, shit. <laughs> Are doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories. It's kind of like honey badgers and capybaras are two ends of the nihilism spectrum. You got the four-legged assault Oreo who doesn't value anyone's life, not even its own. And then there's a hippo hamster who can't be physically bothered enough to care. And you would think this mentality would have gotten the cappy written out of the series of life by evolution. Or maybe they have the opposite of the kangaroo situation. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly absurd predators the world had ever seen. Stuff like a 23-foot Komodo dragon, or the marsupial lion thylacrio. That prehistoric PTSD means that even though kangaroos today have to deal with zero apex land predators, they still act like they're in the trenches. So it's possible capybaras had few natural predators coming up, and now they're Helen Keller to all forms of conflict. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. They're the Omen 16 oh, laptop. I can game on the go on the highest Yo. settings on the latest GP. This man giving you the, he giving you the lowdown, bruh. But yeah, like I said earlier, man, the exact opposite of the honey bee, 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 badger, bee, what, 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 huh? to all forms of conflict. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. Their ancestors were actually small rodents that evolved from Africa. These are calves, but they're roughly the same size as capybaras' ancestors would have been. Okay. Got about 80 million years ago. Being small was lit because one, it's a whole lot easier to hide. And number two, eventually you get so small that putting you on a plane isn't worth the energy it would take to catch you. And when their ancestors pulled up to South America 40 million years later, they showed up to an area with few natural predators and plenty of food in the forms of the grasses they like to eat. Scientists now say that it was the lack of predatory pressure that allowed this plus size rabbit pig to grow to the size it is today. That and apparently capybaras have a special form of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In non-AP biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that capys were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. But of course, nature always catches up, and it wasn't like the capybara was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are. And in a messed up Uno reverse, becoming a literal mighty mouse. Dang, that thing got got, bro. Enough to disregard danger like manatees are. And in a messed up Uno reverse, becoming a literal mighty mouse meant the capybara was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre bulk. So it's pretty much like capys today have to pay for how good their ancestors had it. Like Gen Z. It's also possible that the capybara. Yo. <laughs> Relax, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> you good? You good over there? Like, you chilling? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Tell me about the animals. <laughs> I mean, you got a problem? You feel me? Nah. <laughs> oh, I'm a millennial, just in case you were wondering. All right, let's go. <laughs> Today have to pay for how good their ancestors had it like Gen Z. It's also possible that the capybara isn't as easygoing as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, and each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most food and female validation, which can lead to a lot of infighting in the capy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always gonna be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant alpha male lays more pipe than any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. The females also get a say in the matter too. Mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs him by nosediving into the nearest body of water, where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cabbie community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely not like bonobos, who seem to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't explain why cabbie bars are so chill around animals not even in the same species. Like Take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued and sent to live in a refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. And in typical cappy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, sleeping, playing, and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned puppies coming through the sanctuary. If you're this far in the video and you're not subscribed, what the fuck? 
She would regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise them like her own blood. She would even discipline her pups if they ever got too out of line. Cheesecake was basically a Mother Teresa for terriers and any other orphan pups. Those weren't the only animals she adopted in her time, but there's actually a really good reason why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with, and why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. Stop it. <laughs> Yo, hold on. I don't know what Chuck E. Cheese is today. <laughs> but when I was a kid, <laughs> it was pretty lit. You know what I'm saying? I know out here we got, I, I don't know if where, wherever y'all is, y'all might have run out how like John's Incredible Pizza. You no, know, I think ours has changed. I, I live in the, the high desert. There was one on Bear Valley, but I think it changed, moved somewhere. I don't know. But come on now. I, I understand it got, like, I don't know what that is, like, what's going on in this particular picture, because I ain't. Even growing up, I ain't, chicken ain't little like that. I don't know who that is. I, that, he belong on like Five Nights at Freddy's or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's go. Something about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. Capybaras do this thing called aloe cheese. Something about that cheddar this feed. This isn't a joke. I once had a legitimate. Oh, it never really sat right with me. Capybaras do this thing called aloe parenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group in this kind of like revolving daycare system. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left. He going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. The benefit <laughs> is that in a jungle full of EDP sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup. To what? Threats to who? You just you see, and that's the thing about this man. Like, his jokes, it's just like he's just slinging past you. He don't pause on nothing. He don't like give you a minute to settle into laughter. He just run it by you and just keep on moving. Like he ain't say a damn thing. Like what? <laughs> and right now, the benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup's chances at actually surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother. She was the mother that stepped up. Also, I just want to say that the same sanctuary would end up getting another capybara named Cobbler, and now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies, and I feel like we should just take some time to appreciate that. Another thing to appreciate is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole ala parenting thing, but cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's not the same as having a built-in nursery system in the group. So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in her system is what makes this He-Man hamster what it is. Capybara's got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? It's time you heard about Original Grain. Grain. Now you guys know me. Well, it all started in the Izu Shaboten Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker said bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. And ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo hamsters to enjoy. Which is the entire backstory as to how this video exists. And because whatever capybara received, they give back tenfold, these videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of yen in revenue, all from people wanting to see them. Meaning it is scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, that capybaras are good for the economy. If your country is currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw a capybara hot tub party. If you can't remember, then I think you found your problem. We don't need stimulus checks. We need more happy cabbies per capita. That's why there are entire... The subtle bars to happy cabbies per capita to kid with the what now? Come on now. <laughs> oh, man. And the reason I do this is because I, I have a volume issue with my microphone. If I mean, if you haven't noticed, like when it's down there, you can't really hear me as well, even though you could at one point. So I need to get a new mic at some point. So, but yeah, that, that, that part our websites dedicated to finding the closest capybara in your area. So if I ever post a picture of me in a capybara with no context, this, this is the context. Capybaras are such an unlimited serotonin hack that naturally people are going to ask if they're good pets. And my answer is, yeah, they probably be good pets. Question is, would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably wouldn't. One is that they poop. A lot. They kind of have the panda problem, where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot back, so to compensate, they eat a whole lot more of it. Which means they seem to drop deuces at will. You might not get to notice just how much, because capybara also take part in coprophagia, which in NICE 2023 YouTube guidelines terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it. And if you- <laughs> Woo! I had to explain it to you in YouTube policy language. <laughs> 
God. It's its own language at this point. But I got to tell you, man, my videos get limited and I still have to get reviewed and get them unlimited, which means they shouldn't have been limited in the first place. YouTube, you weird. All right, we move. You can handle watching this infinite food glitch in action. There's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place. Remember, we're talking about a gerbil that can weigh as much as you. But you're not just feeding one cappy. Since they're social animals that don't do well alone, you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that. Because two's company, but three's a party. And no self-respecting cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. There's also the fact that since half their life involves water, you're gonna have to have 24 hour access to anything the capybara can at least wade in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water, so you might wanna rethink that. But the best reason why you might wanna hold off on adopting a walking coconut, it's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad and you realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming at you. In fact, in 2005, a capybara in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his pool by grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting a biting, pooping, eating machine, you might be better off just having kids, because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or eating machine, you might be better off just having kids because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Cappy clan seen the spawn en masse inside the Argentinian gated community. They quite literally pulled up. The upside? Free lawn control. The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses, while also becoming a danger to everyone on the road. There have also been reports of capybara running fades with pet dogs, although to be fair, the dogs probably started it. But there is another bright side if you want to look at it that way. The biggest threat to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn into leather. We're their biggest op by far, and if they decide to take back what's theirs, I'm not gonna be mad at it. And the fact that they're doing it to a gated rich community, I, there's a moral in there somewhere. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent uploads, be sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post daily on both. And if you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing, also consider becoming a patron on Patreon. But like, only do it if you can afford it, because honestly, you watching a video this far is actually more than I can really ask for. Got a whole lot of video ideas I wanna get out for the new year, so as always, drink water, hug your mother, Dap up your father if he's not into the whole hugging thing. Try to be a cappy in a world full of cappers. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. And them things will pull up and Are they crossing the street, bruh. They just won't parar. Ah, I don't believe in this. Hey, they waited though. They waited though. They gonna stop all the rest of the traffic, but they waited for it to stop. Yo, hey, this was dope, this was dope, that was dope, we watched dope sh here, hey, that was a W vid, like, it had, that vid had wholesomeness, that vid had ops, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 it had that, that, that chill factor, it had comedy, and it had bars, Homie was spitting in some of them, in some of what he was saying, my guy. But like, yo, nah, them dudes cool, you know. This is, this is, yeah, we, we, we mess with Casual Geographic. The curious case of the capybara. Just real passive, chill, but can still get you, you know what I'm saying? But just to really don't give up, really. Just kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Out there, you know what I'm saying? Testing some boundaries, but not in a way to like fight. Just to see what'll happen. <laughs> You know what I mean? But yeah, duh, W on a casual geographic with this one, man. This shit was, ah, oh, dang it. See, I gotta say, I gotta be careful with the cousin, but this crap was hilarious, man. I, I, I mess with this one heavy. That's the take. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, follow me on all that there, social media, and I'll catch y'all next one, fam. Peace.